Every September long weekend, a group of friends make the three-hour-plus drive from Edmonton, Alberta, to a spot where the Athabasca and Burland Rivers meet. The last hour of the drive is via unpaved logging roads, until the eagerly anticipated view of the bridge and a first glimpse of the majestic beauty of the Columbia Glacier-fed river. The weekend is affectionately named Man vs. Fish and is led by Mike and Terry. The Athabasca River begins at the Columbia Glacier in Jasper National Park and travels about 1,500 kilometers northeast across Alberta and drains into Lake Athabasca in the northeast. Lake Athabasca flows into the Slave River and joins the Mackenzie River, which eventually flows to the Arctic Ocean, traveling over 1,230 kilometers from start to glacier to mouth. As the Athabasca River flows, it also goes through a tremendous change in elevation from 1,062 meters at Jasper to about 205 meters at its mouth in Lake Athabasca. There are four natural regions in the Athabasca watershed, Rocky Mountain, Foothills, Boreal Forest, and Canadian Shield. The central and lower areas are mainly boreal forest, while the upper region includes foothills and Rocky Mountains. The Athabasca River is an historic waterway for First Nations peoples and the fur trade. The Sakani, Shushwa, Kootenai, Salish, Stony, and Cree tribes hunted and fished along the river prior to European colonization. From about 1778, the Athabasca River was a key part of the main fur trade route from the Mackenzie River to the Great Lakes. Athabasca and Berlin, a fishing tale. Nine years of running this weekend on, on the Athabasca Berlin here. And uh, this year is probably been the toughest fishing. People haven't really been getting all that much, but uh, still having a great time out cooking over the fires and having a few adult beverages to make the evening go a little faster. You know, fishing is such great fun in that. Uh, for me, standing out in the river, trying to figure out what fly, or even if I'm hardware fishing, what lure uh, it, am I gonna be trying to entice the fish to come? Uh, it, it is, for me, a zen-like experience at times. You're out there, you're concentrating, you, you're in nature, you've got the water, you've got the wind, you've got the sun, and you are just out there and you kind of like to forget about everything else and you're just concentrating on what you're doing at that point in time. And as a kid I grew up fishing in southern Alberta with my father and used to have great great memories of, of doing that and then of course as you get a little older and 
you get busy with life. Um, we, Michael and I kind of got back into this probably 15, 16 years yeah. ago uh, through our, the, our <coughs> spouses who have been friends for uh, since they were little girls. And uh, we found that, you know, we did ice fishing, we've done all sorts of different things. And it's a, it, fishing, uh, when you have a good fishing buddy and you can go out, you solve the world's problems and you come back and have a, have a few beverages, you get some good meals, uh, you have a great experience. But I think to going forward, what I would like, obviously for my kids and my grandkids, is to see if they can really develop the fishing bug as well. And, uh, you know, they've done a little bit of it in the past, but of course they're busy with their kids right now. And, and uh, but I'm hoping that over the next year or two, it'll, they'll participate in what Michael and his son and son-in-law and friends have been doing with this Man vs. Fish, a good weekend of bonding just about fishing. I grew up in, a, in Manitoba on a farm, southern Manitoba, and my early recollections were going to Lockport on the docks below the weir and fishing for bullheads and, uh, and bass as a young child, six, seven years old with my older brother. And uh, then, you know, after that, uh, you know, went to university and came out to, to Alberta uh, for work. And during that period of time, really didn't fish until I got to Alberta because, uh, you know, here we'd heard about the great streams and the fishing in Alberta. So uh, when I first moved out here, my family and, and I, we, we would go fishing and our first son, we, we cooked him one day on the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the lake when we're walleye fishing. fishing. He was six months old and he, he got quite sunburnt, unfortunately, and we kind of kind of disappointed in that after all these years, but no long-term symptoms as far as we can tell. And, uh, and then, you know, I got into steelhead fishing uh, when I was a younger man in my early 30s. And then the family came along, got bigger and worked and, and stopped for a lot of years, for probably 15 years until uh, Terry and I got back together, or got together, I guess, and, and started fishing. And now, uh, you know, I re recovered my fly tying, which I used to do when I was young. I took it over at WW and Arcade. I took my first lessons over there from the old guy that used to sell the fishing equipment. So for me, it's been part of my life. And, and for me, it's, it's not even, anymore about catching fish, to tell you the honest truth. It's just the experience and, and the boat really enhances that for me and, and the friendship that we have and just getting away. And, and uh, I'm, I've been retired for quite a while and I'm not under stress, but every time I take Terry out there, he's coughing when we start and after 10 minutes in the truck, truck is coughing, cough, coughing is gone, gone and, and uh, there's no more signs of any stresses. So it is kind of zen. And then, you know, when we go out fishing in Ware Town, he's at my place at six in the morning. We go for steelhead, and the guy sleeps till nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we should be out there. That's how relaxed he is out there. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to tell what it really means. My, my granddaughter was just uh, over before we came uh, to do some, uh, some stuff. And, and I was talking to her, she's gonna be three soon that maybe next year we're going to go fishing and she's already knows that grandpa goes fishing so uh and my son is fishing and uh, hopefully the grandchildren like terry's will soon get into that and uh, and man against fish was the, that kind of inroad where we do it on a regular basis and hopefully we can leave that legacy for our grandchildren this is great country and and uh, the fishing is getting a little tougher and i guess because we fished 30 35 years ago we never appreciated just how good fishing was and it yeah. is getting tougher, but uh, hopefully uh, we, we need some conservation and we need some restocking and, and that's coming. There's nothing more uh, satisfying than to tie a fly, put it on your line and go and catch a fish. Yeah. So, so that's something, and I would last, finish with this. You know what, if fly fishing isn't for you, fine and dandy. And I know that in most of the streams, I would catch more fish 
using a spinning rod and probably a Panther Martin or a spinner than I do catching a fly, to tell you the honest truth. You don't have to always be a fly fisherman because everybody, I got neighbors and so on that go out with spinners and they're basically catching more fish than I am. So you can start with spinner, it's a lot easier to do. It doesn't cut, you can buy a spinning outfit for, for peanuts and get a few Panther Martins and MEPs and, and away you go and you'll catch some fish. Human development activities in the Athabasca River Basin have generated some major environmental concerns. Economic activity in the upper portion of the watershed is dominated by forestry, agriculture, and tourism, as well as three active coal mines and one closed. There are five pulp and paper mills in the upper half of the watershed. Forestry occurs throughout the river basin, while oil sands developments dominate the lower portion. A growing number of municipal wastewater treatment plants discharge into the Athabasca River. Unmanaged recreational activities are increasingly causing stress in several areas of the watershed. Mike and Terry have seen a change in fish numbers and the surrounding landscape over recent years. Mike, Terry, 
and those that also fish these waters can only hope that the decline can be stopped and such a special place as the Athabasca and Berlin is here for generations to come.